Hi guys and welcome to TechSimGB. This video is a kind of a special episode here at Computex. It's basically going to be the kind of most interesting, innovative and new tech on the show floor, both in the Nyang Gang Hall and in the uh, specific booths in uh, Grand Hyatt and stuff like that from people like Corsair, Fantex, EVGA in the Grand Hyatt, from Gigabyte in their own Type A 101 suite and from a whole host of people including Coolmaster uh, from the Nyang Gang Hall. So let's take a look. So first up is the ASUS booth and specifically this one is their new X299 board. This one is pretty much the highest end board that they're going to be doing, has a few new cool features and some very nice aesthetics including of course RGB and also stuff, uh, new features like the DIM.2 slot. This allows you to put two M.2 slots right next to the motherboard, uh, right next to the, the CPU rather uh, and get uh, in theory a little bit of a faster connection. You also have some very nice uh, RGB elements. You also have actually a little display just above the audio connectors there and obviously a pretty decent I.O. including what I believe is actually uh, like AC or AD Wi-Fi as well so that's pretty awesome. I also have a few new sort of more value boards including the Sabretooth and I think they also have uh, a little bit of an even more value one as well uh, available so that's also pretty awesome. The most awesome thing though was the new Threadripper board. This is uh, the X399, which again AMD is just playing and uh, games with the numbers, but it looks awesome. It's the Zenith Extreme, and my god, it's just stupidly high-end. There is so many new features on here, I, I will have to spend an entire video reviewing it. It also has a DIM.2 slot as well, which is very nice. Uh, overclocking, two 8-pin headers, uh, which is actually pretty intense. A 10 gigabit uh, networking card is included, which is also really awesome. And uh, yeah, just a really awesome board. This one also has AD Wi-Fi, that display in the radio for like boot codes and stuff, and LEDs in the uh, audio section too. So yeah, it'll be very interesting to test both of these boards. They also have some really awesome monitors available, starting with the actually a 1080p 27-inch monitor. Uh, this one was actually pretty fun to play on. Uh, obviously, they have it in a sort of surround sound option here. They've also got a new, uh, I believe, a, a TN 165Hz 27-inch uh, uh, monitor as well, uh, uh, sort of 1440p, and a new 200Hz uh, ultra-wide uh, 3440 uh, by 1440, which is just kind of insane. Also has RGB backlighting on the back and just looks really, really awesome. Gigabyte is up next, and again, they also have some X299 boards. This one is Gaming 9. It's pretty ridiculous and high-end. You've got multiple uh, M.2 SSDs, many PCIe slots, pretty decent radio as well, including Wi-Fi. I don't think this one is AD, though, but still pretty nice. Uh, also looks pretty awesome with just a sheer, like, a buttload of RGB. I mean, actually, the main question is, is this too much RGB? Every single PCIe slot is RGB. The the heatsink, all the RAM dims, the, the radio covers and everything. They also got the Gaming 7 which is a little bit more toned down although probably not that much uh, and is also pretty awesome. This is it lit up again. Still just how much how much is too much? Let me know in the comments down below. They've also got a few more I guess value boards so they have the Ultra Gaming which I think is actually meant to sit below the Gaming 3 but nonetheless is still a little bit better value and then the Gaming 3 itself is again a little bit better value. They've also got some M.2 heat sinks, in fact quite a few on the Gaming 9, I think 3 in total or something crazy. And they also have a Threadripper board X399 as well. Looks awesome, doesn't have as many M.2 actual heat sinks, although this one I think is still fairly work in production. Looks like it has a load of PCIe connectivity as we know it does with the actual set of specs of the chips themselves. And obviously the, uh, the new socket which requires a screw to undo, obviously quad channel memory and some pretty awesome overall specs. So yeah, it'll be very interesting to see uh, any of these boards out. This is the, the rear that they currently got set up, although I assume that this is likely to change as development comes through. And again, an M.2 SSD sort of heatsink as well, which is quite nice. The other massive thing that I saw there was actually a B350 AM4 ITX board. I cannot wait to, to pick one of these up and uh, have a play with them. It looks really awesome. has Wi-Fi, uh, obviously uh, USB, no Type-C here, but still pretty awesome. And I really, especially for some of the mod projects that I want to do, also has an M.2 slot in the back. This is going to be really, really awesome. A quick note from Azrock, some of their X299 boards, these are pretty awesome, they do seem to have a pretty good range including uh, sort of more high-end and more low-end, 
and they do have uh, basically less RGB. So if you want a few more sort of toned down boards, then you can go check these ones out. Load of M.2 connectivity here as well. And also what was really, really impressive was their ITX board. This is insane. It has dual gigabit LAN, has a really good SATA and Wi-Fi, rear IO and PCIe connectivity. So that is insane. It does use SODEM memory though. They also had a really cool PC mod, sort of an aircraft carrier, and they had a Bitcoin mining setup with a whole load of uh, RX 580s. Also popped in to see EVGA, and they have some pretty cool new X299 motherboards. This is their first RGB motherboard, so let me know what you think of that in the comments down below. And they also had their X299 Dark, which is the, the one they're kind of, sort of going for the overclocking for, sort of right angle, uh, 24 pin, and that sort of stuff. Also had some really cool 1080 Ti's. Most people had 1080 Ti's on show, but these ones were pretty awesome. These are the ones with two 8-pin connectors actually on the back rather than on the side. So sort of like their power link design just makes it a little bit easier to cable manage. Also looks pretty awesome, obviously the EVGA logo on the side. They do have two and three fan variants and if you are part of their Elite Club or uh, you know, whatever it's called, then you can actually get the custom colors, which is awesome. Uh, you can get that for the two or the three fan design. I think you basically just need to have basically bought a graphics card from EVGA in the last like 12 months and you can apply for that. They also have a sort of a hybrid card which looks really awesome and actually has uh, the water block covering and the memory modules in there as well and because of their ICX cooling with the different uh, sort of temperature sensors on the board it can actually ramp up the fan on there uh, to do different things and sort of keep the VRMs or the memory cool. You also have a couple of lights on the card itself to show different uh, temperatures as well which is quite nice. They also have their SC15 which is a really awesome gaming laptop has a pretty comprehensive IO set and I really do want to take a look at these and compare that to stuff like the uh, MSI GS60 as this looks like a really uh, very interesting competitor. They said that this was actually a 120 hertz IPS display which uh, especially from taking a look at the viewing angles was really really impressive. Looked very awesome and uh, I really do want to check one of these laptops out because looks like a, a very impressive deal. Also headed over to the Acer Predator booth which was actually pretty cool. Obviously they have the 21X on show which is just an insane behemoth of a gaming rig. Really is, uh, I suppose they would call it desktop replacement, but it's basically just a desktop laptop. They also had some uh, thinner rest of Max-Q certified laptops as well, which do look pretty nice. A bit of an interesting design having the keyboard so low, and I'd be interested to hear what you think of that in the comments down below as well. But uh, yeah, it looked like a pretty awesome laptop, and I would like to take a look at the uh, the new Predator lineup. They also had the Star VR, which looks a little bit strange. Uh, in fact, actually, the, the headset looks just very strange as well. Um, so uh, again, a bit of a, an interesting one. I didn't have a chance to try it, so I don't know if the tracking is you know considerably better, but again, looks a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier. If you want to know any more about MSI's gear, uh, I did two full videos on that, so feel free to take a look at those. But nonetheless, uh, they did some really awesome mods here, including their Mystic Lake Sync game, which is actually a fully functional PC, and you had to basically press the buttons on the bottom to sort of sync the lights. And you also had a claw grabber machine, which allowed you to win that little MSI dragon that's hanging onto the PCIe riser there. Uh, here's the one that I one there so yeah pretty awesome. Headed over to the Coolmaster booth where they're actually doing some live modding as well as had some really just incredible modded systems I mean this is just incredible I don't know how that's done. Uh, the live modding was actually really awesome got to see some of the uh, Cosmos mods uh, which I'll talk a little bit about in a second but uh, yeah obviously Trident Z uh, RGB RAM and they're replacing uh, putting full uh, water cooling on there. Now they actually have a new case in fact they have a load of new cases including the Masterbox Q300T. This one is a sort of a customizable case, so you can make it uh, a standard chassis size. Uh, you can change the panels color-wise. You can do uh, quite a lot of stuff with it. Uh, and this is the Q, so this is kind of like the uh, sort of ITX or MATX form factor. They've also changed up uh, to do the Cosmos 25th, uh, 25th Anniversary Edition. This is basically just the Cosmos 2, but with curved tempered glass, uh, which is actually really awesome. And then they've got the uh, new version of the Cosmos as well, the, the C700P. This one has double curved glass, which is kind of insane. Has RGB on the top that actually shines into the inside and actually looks pretty stylish, obviously, through a diffuser, so it's not right in your face. Also has underglow as well, which does look pretty cool. This is the, the dual curved glass. They say that this is the first case with dual curved glass, so there was actually quite a few at Computex. They also have a, a whole new lineup of Master Box, and this is the new half uh, high airflow case. Uh, just a whole load of fans. Looks really pretty. 
obviously has uh, plexiglass over the top as well, uh, so it also looks pretty cool. And they're also doing a new custom water cooling loop, so this is actually a water cooling kit you can pick up from Cooler Master fairly shortly. Uh, that just is an all-in-one water cooling loop, but obviously, uh, you know, sort of fully custom. They're also doing some new concept design, so this one uh, is the sort of uh, Wraith style design. Looks really awesome. Don't know how RAM clearance is going to work with this one, but it does look pretty cool. Obviously, the, the new fans that I did a full review on, so feel free to check those out. And a whole load of new power supplies as well, including a few fanless ones that I think they're going to be doing some cool stuff with. They've also got a few new peripherals, including a lineup for the, the Master Keys lineup, which looks really awesome, and a sort of replacement for the uh, Master Keys Pro L and stuff like that. And a few new mice as well, the MM530 and MM520. Uh, one of them is ambidextrous and the other isn't. Also headed to Fantex's uh, suite as well, where they have a new P300. This is a single-sided tempered glass case. I think it's retailing for like $65 or something crazy. Like it's ridiculously low. It's brilliant value for money. Actually, has sort of two sections for the power supply and obviously for the main components. Uh, it can fit a load of water cooling support uh, and is just a ridiculously good value for money. Also has a sort of cable routing area so uh, you have pretty good uh, sort of cable management as well so really really very impressive. They also have a few new concept designs where basically this is a, a chassis, an ITX chassis that you can basically remove all the panels. has a flip up top and the power buttons would sit up the top as well. Uh, it has a sort of PCIe riser so you can sit the graphics its card in interesting positions, fits a load of water cooling, especially the extended version as well, has a very interesting way to do airflow, as I said, uh, the pop-up top. It's a, an ICX, a full-size ITX motherboard, and you can fit a dual-slot graphics card. Obviously, these are where the, the buttons are the thinking about placing them. And this is uh, two of those systems, the standard and the extended version with systems in them, including a full custom water cooling loop. You can also take the feet off the bottom and use it as sort of a living room PC, and this looks really awesome. They've also got their Halo S RGB fan frames, and basically, uh, instead of buying fans that might not be quite as good as, uh, you know, maybe a Corsair ML series or or whatever you can buy this frame attach it and that adds RGB to it you've also got this new pump combo design which actually looks really just amazing I desperately want one of these it's a reservoir combo and as I said it just looks really amazing you can mount it to the front of a fan uh, and as I said just looks really really cool but Phoenix is next on the list with a really really impressive Enzo case this looks awesome has individually addressable LEDs on the front because of course RGB is uh, you know just here to stay apparently uh, and just just, it looks really awesome. They're actually, I think, uh, planning on selling this for like 60 or $70. Has tempered glass on the side and looks like a beautiful, beautiful case. Like, I'm really, really impressed with this and I'm very interested to get my hands on it. Actually has a few cool dust filter setups. It also has the RGB control on the back that I think they're planning on refining so that you can sell them separately. Uh, these are the dust filters, by the way. It's really nice that they're very easily accessible. Two for the front and one for the power supply at the bottom and a magnetic one for the two fans at the top so really nice and easy to clean this out I know it's a really big problem with some cases where it's really difficult to get at they're also looking at a new alchemy LED strips and there's a new version of the Novo with tempered glass I think this one's also incredibly cheap as well so I'm really interested in seeing what the final pricing is either way these look really cool also comes in white in one have some pretty crazy cases and this one is no exception this is the Winbot actually has a camera in it so that you can use hand gestures to turn itself and it's absolutely, it's just insane. I don't know when this is going to go on sale. It's probably going to be about as expensive as last year's uh, incredibly cool sort of tower chassis that lifts itself up via an app. Uh, they also have a new mirror design. Again, I don't know when this is, one is going to be out. Also, it is featuring the new uh, Crosshair 6 uh, Extreme board, uh, a brand new board from Asus I'd love to check out as a display on it and stuff like that. Uh, and just overall, the chassis looks awesome. As I said, sort of a mirror design. They also have a a few new chassis that are actually using uh, wood paneling as a sort of new feature and obviously tempered glass. They also have this new fan design which actually looks really cool, means that you can mount them in certain ways and effectively move the fan around while just attaching it to the standard uh, 120mm fan frame. So looks very interesting and it'll be interesting to see how it actually works inside a chassis. Corsair's offering were pretty numerous as well including some new AIO liquid coolers, they actually have a new pump design and they're going to be offering a 360mm 
mile version as well, which is awesome for you guys that need uh, just ridiculous cooling potential. They also have some new custom water cooling kits, which are going to be incredible. They're doing both CPU and GPU blocks. They've got a uh, sort of uh, a prototype chassis, again, with actually curved tempered glass. Looks really very nice. I think it's based on the uh, 780T or something like that, is the, the concept curve. They also have the new Corsair Sync, uh, which is incredible, and basically they want to be able to sync every peripheral, every fan, every LED strip, and you can do a whole load of effects, which looks just really, really awesome. They've also got this uh, PC mod that's the front of a Pontiac GTO, and uh, just looks really cool. It's part of the sort of new Torque RAM, uh, and they've also got uh, the new Vengeance RGB RAM as well, which just, again, looks really incredible, especially on the X299 boards. They've also got incredibly high speed versions of that too, and there was the new uh, Concept Slate, which is an incredibly massive chassis, fits a full-size ATX system uh, with like multiple graphics cards and a full-size ITX chassis with a full graphics card on the bottom too. They're also doing the K68, uh, which is a waterproof keyboard, which looks insane for you guys that drop uh, you know stuff all over your keyboard regularly. And I think this was uh, Project Zeus or Concept Zeus. This is basically a, the a, a mouse pad that you plug into your uh, PC and a wireless gaming mouse, Corsair's first wireless gaming mouse, that you can actually charge on the mouse pad. That's incredible. as has uh, Qi charging, so if you have a phone that supports it or an adapter that supports it, you can actually have it charge your phone as well. This is a concept and I don't know when it's coming out, but it looks really awesome and I cannot wait to see it. Next up is Be Quiet, who have a limited edition version of their uh, Base 600. This looks really awesome. Also got a 360mm version of their silent loop which again is going to be great and a new version of their uh, SFXL power supplies uh, this is fully modular a bigger fan for better airflow and obviously quieter as it's be quiet and a bracket that lets you mount it in a standard ATX form factor and in their straight power lineup also a completely wire free design inside for better airflow as well. On the power supply front FSP are just the weirdest with a water cooled power supply Yes, you heard that right, it's water cold. It has a water block on the bottom and uh, yeah. And last but not least is G-Skill. They're obviously showing off their Trident Z RGB kits, including in a uh, sort of quad channel form factor, which is actually really cool. Uh, nice to see that that's still possible on X299 and stuff like that. They're also showing off a ridiculously high speed kit of 4800 megahertz. This is also CL19, uh, 1990, 1939, so incredibly good uh, overall kit of RAM there if you want some really high spec. And as I said, for the X299 uh, as well. So I hope this video was uh, interesting for you. I kind of went for a more sort of digest uh, or roundup version rather than doing individual videos uh, for a couple of reasons but mostly hopefully it's uh, going to be a bit more interesting, a bit more enjoyable for you guys to watch as a sort of uh, can check out all of the most interesting tech available as opposed to watching multiple different videos. Uh, I'd really like to know what you uh, think of that though. Uh, hopefully I'll be here next year as well so if you want to see me doing individual videos as quick as I possibly can on each subject obviously I did a couple for MSI and obviously one for the Intel launch as well so uh, if you'd like to see that then let me know in the comments down below or if you'd like to see this kind of video where it's more of a digest of everything that I saw and felt, felt was worth uh, photographing and videoing uh, then feel free to also let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise check out the rest of the Comitex coverage including the MSI videos and thank you to MSI for bringing me out here as part of the Dragon Squad thing uh, but either way yeah, as I said feel free to check those out also feel free to check out some of the other people that I was with including uh, Wendell from Level 1 Techs, also met Linus, I think uh, Paul from Paul's Hardware, also met uh, Jay from Jay's Two Cents, also met uh, Steve from uh, Gamers Nexus, and a few other people as well, also uh, Dimitri uh, from Hardware Canucks and Eber from Hardware Canucks, they're really nice guys by the way, they're, in fact all of them have actually been really nice, so that's really awesome, but uh, yeah, I'll stop talking and let you get on with your life, so see you all in the next video.